Welcome to the replacement video for marketing week one. This is the marketing recap. This is just basically uh, going over some of the fundamentals, ground conditions, and general principles of marketing to make certain that we're on the same page, that we agree on some common concepts. So basically, in services marketing this semester, there are a couple of frameworks that are important. We are going to look at the definitions of marketing, the marketing mix, the concept of co-creation, and the idea of service dominant logic. These are elements of general marketing practice and principles that you may have encountered before, you may have covered elsewhere. What the objective here is, is to ensure that when I'm mentioning these concepts and frameworks, you understand where I come from as my view. As always, in my subjects, I believe very much that my view is not the definitive. My view is one of many ways in which the world can be interpreted. So in particular, when we come to things like the choice of the marketing mix or the choice of the marketing definition or <coughs> how you want to uh, interpret co-creation they or service dominant logic you have a choice and you can if there are alternative interpretations you want to use you just simply have to let me know what they are and use your citation and your reference to support them so in a quick recap this is my worldview in the sense of the marketing and the approaches that I take so first up there are two definitions of marketing that are of interest to us. These are the American Marketing Association 2007-2013 definition. This particular definition is a strategic top-level worldview. Uh, it comes with its own embedded marketing mix. So marketing as a process. Marketing creates, communicates, delivers, and exchange offerings that have value. Now this concept of the offering that has value is significant because it means that we have moved away from deciding that the totality of marketing is something preset, that marketing is something that is uh, the creation of a product it's now an offering that has value. And the nature of an offering is that it doesn't have to be the complete finished article. So this enables ideas like customer co-creation value and co-production. On the other side, the Chartered Institute of Marketing, the Chartered Institute is based in the UK, so this is the British definition of marketing. The CIM approaches the, their worldview of marketing is very strategic, it's a top level, it's identifying, anticipating and satisfying. So this is the, like, the little mantra, uh, their pocket mantra is a strategic one. Identify the opportunity, anticipate the market and satisfy the requirements of the customer. Do it well enough and it will be a profitable insofar as the aim of marketing is to create greater value or generate more rewards than it generates costs. So all of marketing's uh, philosophical approaches here, the offering that has value and the identified, anticipated and satisfied customer requirements. So offerings that have value, customer requirements. These are the two areas that are basically covering uh, how we would approach creating a product offer or a value offer for a marketplace. You may use either. Uh, I said my worldview approach is when it's time to get tactical and implement, go with the American definition. Create, communicate, deliver, exchange is a great little checklist mantra. Have I made it? Have I explained it? Can people access it? Will I get something back in return? Will they get something uh, from the product? And the CIM is the great strategy one of identify, anticipate, satisfy. Uh, really good way to think about the world in terms of 
If I'm going to grow my market, I need to know what my market wants, where they are, who they are, what they look like. If I'm going to uh, enable the uh, company to do to make a profit, to turn a profit, it needs to be able to work out where to be. So anticipates a little more future focused than create, communicate, deliver. Both play their roles. So again, this is a sort of the highlight package. Your tactical is around create, communicate, deliver, exchange. Your strategic is around identify, anticipate, satisfy. Either way works for you. Use the one that gives you the best return. One that is the most value to you. The second area of open debate, discussion, and variance is the marketing mix. In services marketing, we use the seven P's of marketing. We use the classic product, price, promotion, place. Now, I always order, my preference in the ordering is product first. You need to know what it is. What is your value offer? Price second. What does it cost the consumer in terms of use and using it? Place, how do they get to the product offer? Promotion, how do we explain the first three elements, what it is, what it does, where to get it and how much it costs? How do we explain that? In services marketing, we bring in the idea of people because services are personally delivered. They come with the challenges of how do we integrate the role of the individual, both the customer as the co-creator and the service provider as the skill, uh, or basically as the skill set that makes the service happen. With the seduction model, you will see that the uh, people and process show up as part of the extent, and in fact, the extended marketing mix really shows through, shines through the uh, seduction model, people, process, and fiscal evidence. Process is what is required to facilitate the existence of the service product. How do we make a service happen? How does it come to life? How does it come to fruition? How do you create the thing? Uh, physical evidence is basically the acknowledgement that services are fundamentally intangible. They are skills or processes or people because they're fundamentally intangible, what we are needing to do is to acknowledge that there is a role for the fiscal environment in terms of persuading people, informing people, and even facilitating the service. So if you're going to uh, have a service which is fitness, fitness training, and you want to host, you want to have a gym, you need the physical equipment in the gym. So somewhere like Anytime Fitness to needs both the gymnasium, but it also needs a 24 hour access because what's the point of calling yourself anytime if you're closed um, or you can't be accessed 24 seven. Similarly, for processes in services, you see things, uh, processes are both the implementation of the service, but also the behind the scenes. So if we go back to the 24 hour gym, the pass card, swipe card, the digital security, the digital verification, the Anytime Fitness's claim to fame, or their, their, their product pitch is train anywhere that we have a gym anytime. So you need to have a system that allows me to, as an Anytime Fitness member, tap my little swipe access pass against that gym lock anywhere on the planet that the gym exists and be verified in a matter of seconds. So I can go access my gym and go off and do my training regime. Now I know this works because I was training in a gym in London at the Anytime Fitness and it was a case of as fast as the lock at the one in Civic where I normally train. So it was the promise through the physical evidence and through the physical environment was kept there was a 24 hour gym. The process allowed me to access it and that's the extended mix supporting services. Now there are two other marketing mixes that are available. There are the four C's of marketing, uh, which I tend not to use. I, uh, my preference, I like, again, I look at the world in terms of how you can use something. 
The classic marketing mix is product is the service producer's handbook. Price, product, promotion, place, people, process, and physical evidence are all elements that you adjust, control, or influence as a provider. The remix, the SIVA, simply SIVA, the solution information value access, is the marketing mix reconsidered from the world view of the customer. And the idea here is that we want the customer to, centering the customer means that we think, how do they access our offer? So solution is, it's not a clean substitution for product. Solution is a combination of product place, promotion, process. It's the idea of can the customer get from our product the value that we're promising? Can it be used by the customer to meet a need, solve a problem, do something, do the task that they set out to do? What are we, and that becomes really important because if a product fails at the solution point, it's likely to cause dissatisfaction. If it's too complex to use, too hard to use, doesn't do the job, etc. The second step on the SIVA is the idea of information. Information is how the customer finds out about our solution, but also how they find out how to use our solution. So it's knowledge transfer, it's advertising, it's uh, personal selling, it's word of mouth, it's any way in which the customer can become more knowledgeable at the about the product offer we're making. So that varies, again, The uh, it doesn't cleanly come across as that's a substitution for promotion. Price can inform value, the product itself can be self-explanatory, it can uh, help with information. Third is the concept of value. Again, value is not price, value is what is the benefit of our product for the customer. So value incorporates both price, but also product. Process and physical evidence, and maybe even people, but at the end of the day, the SIVA is, what is it, solution information value access, what does it do, how do we find out, how does the customer know about it, and know what to do with it, what are, is it worth it for the customer? Are the costs less than uh, the benefits? And lastly is access. Access also works in a sense of it's more than place, it's more than distribution. It's the idea of can you unpack the solution from the product? When you make something and you provide a solution, access says can you get to it? So. That in itself uh, means things like, does the customer have the requisite skill sets to be able to do, you know, say we're looking at, uh, again, keeping with the Anytime Fitness Gym. Can the customer go to the gym anytime, day or night? Are there access limitations, access requirements? Can the, uh, if you put, well, as many of these gyms are, they're up a flight of stairs, they're down a flight of stairs, that limits accessibility. It also means that you want to th um, think twice about how hard you go on leg day because you're not in an environment necessarily conducive to over, you know, overexerting yourself on leg day. Does that limit access? Well, it limits access and accessibility is also a facet here of uh, does the customer have the other secondary resources? You know, a gym requires gym training, it requires time, it requires certain clothing, it requires the adherence to certain rituals, it requires a skill set. Uh, it also then requires physical, uh, you know, physical body skills. Those are incorporated in the concept of access. And so it's more than just, can they get it on the shelves? Can they make use of it? Like, I will, caveat here to say that I'm an absolute fan of the SIVA model, personally, but it's not always the most useful model. Uh, it's there as an option, but if you are thinking about what do you need to control as a marketing manager, 
what is it you need to control as a as a service provider? The classic mix is your control mechanism, your receiver is your check mechanism. You make your um, operational decisions to influence the marketing mix, then you cross-check it in terms of is it providing a solution, how are they finding out about it, is it creating the value, and is it accessible? Next uh, important theory and concept and framework. Service-dominant logic and co-creation of value. The idea of co-creation of value, we're going to meet its um, elder sibling in services marketing, and that's the concept of co-production. We'll get into that a bit later. Co-production was the genesis from which services marketing accepts that there are points in time where you need to have the customer in the same room as the service provider or else the service cannot take place. You can't drop your body off at the dentist, uh, you can't drop your teeth off at the dentist, drop your face off at the dentist and come back later. You can do that, you can drop your car off at the mechanic and come back for it. You can't take a rental body home, just, you know, oh look, I'll, go, I'll drop the body off on the way into work, go to the, you know, go to the physio, leave, the, leave it there, pick up, uh, transfer your consciousness into something else, come back and get the body later. So you need to be present at the production of the service. So this theory starts off inside services marketing, the co-production, but it sort of extends out into the idea that it, uh, if Vargo and Lucia's conceptual theoretical framework of service dominant logic holds true, and everything is in fact, every physical object has an embedded service in it, and all marketing is just simply the facilitation of a service either provided or co-created or self-produced, then everything in services marketing, nothing in services marketing, service dominant logic says basically what we exchange is applications of competence and applications of skill. Um, now, there's a lot of metaphysical uh, marketing arguments that will break out here, one of which is the idea that uh, even the SIVA solution framework, if all objects are fundamentally the exchange of service, then having the skills to access the service is SIVA's solution and accessibility. SIVA also is 2005, so it's post uh, Virgo and Lucia's 2004 service dominant logic. The other facet here that um, service dominant logic requires is the idea that value is now a function of co-creation. What you get from a product comes from the way in which you use it. So value is created both by consumer and customer. Long pedigree of this in the services marketing field, we've been, and this is an established theory, idea, and framework for us, but it is a new contribution to the broader marketing protocol when you start thinking about what is it we buy? Do we buy the opportunity or do we buy the preset outcome? These two concepts, co-creation of value is going to be a significant factor um, because this is now how we see marketing. This is the worldview that we see. We don't make final offers anymore. We don't make finalized, completed products. We make opportunities for our customers. Look, it sounds a little buzzwordy. I always hate it when I say it, but what it also means is that we're, as producers, we are trusting the customer a lot more now. We're saying, take, buy the stuff from us and figure out what best, how it best works for you. What can you do with it? What makes it that little bit better and that little bit uh, more effective for you? So even I often come back to things like uh, physical goods, but even on something like a service, the, in fact, this subject is going to be a co-creation of value. The opportunity, educational opportunities, even things like these PowerPoint decks and this slide, this pre-recorded, post-recorded video and audio, creates what you do with it, then is now your choice. 
I can create these educational assets, these videos, these PowerPoint decks, these two-hour events in the lectures, uh, lecture, in the Murray Ray uh, teaching space. But without you being there, so I can put a two-hour event on in the Murray Ray space, and it will be a teaching event. But if you come to it and you engage in it and you give it a go and you find out, you know, do, approach it with an open mind of what can I learn today, what can I experience, it becomes the Murray Ray learning space. You get out of it an active, personalized experience because you've put into it the, the active dialogue and the joint creation between me as provider and you as customer. So the co-creation of value, this underpins a lot of the thinking and theoretical frameworks upon which the subject is built. So fundamentally, I see this subject services marketing as an experiential co-creation event. What you get from the subject will in part come from what you put into the subject. So it's okay. Whatever your choice is, is going to be respected by the way I've built the subject. If you don't want to participate, you just want to hear the video, hear the audio tracks, hear the video tracks, read along, do the readings, write the assignments, and you know, you'll wave to me at the exam. That's the value that you are seeking from the subject, and that's the value you can create of the subject. We will have the pathway to support it. If you're looking for a really dynamic, interactive, engaged, the, the personal engagement, the one-on-one the -on -one or one-to-many uh, conversations, and you come along to the Murray Ray sessions and you come along to the teaching sessions, then this is it. You're going to get what you're looking for here. You're going to get that experience. But you've got to put in then the attendance and the participation for it to work. It's also one of the most ridiculously meta experiences in higher education is the idea that whilst we are teaching you the theoretical conceptual frameworks for co-creation of value, you are also, by learning it and studying it, co-creating value. It's learning by doing it, the uh, metaphysical degree. All right, so, uh, during the lecture, the, a bonus reading was uh, introduced. This is the Prowl Hyatt and Ramaswamy, uh, 2004, Co-Creation Experiences, The Next Practice and Value Creation. I'm going to give you a quick context and history to this. This is a 15-year-old paper. It's also the first, it's a waypoint. It marks a transition in academic thinking and business practice. As we go from the role of the customer as passive recipient, and the role of the firm as active creator to this much more dynamic process of the firm through our resources, our skills, our assets, our access to intellectual property, our economies of scale, set up value offerings that allow the customer to pick, choose and engage some of, part of, or all of the value offer. And it's that central point, that overlap between what the customer can do with your product offer, your value offer, and what you can provide to them that creates value and unique value in the market. And this subject does just that. Infrastructure, as the firm, my role here is to create a bunch of assets that provide you with value. Your role as the student is to use the things that work for you to give you the experience that you're seeking from the subject. If you just want to pass and get out, then a bit about the exam, the assessment questions, that's probably the most value creating element, the explanations about how to pass the essay. If you're looking to explore, if you're looking to explore conceptual frameworks, things like the bonus readings will be of value to you. If you're looking to just see what happens and experience the subject and figure it all out later, then the live seminar events will be of value to you. How you mix and match and choose these parts, plus whatever you choose to do yourself in terms of 
individual research, in terms of pursuit of service experiences, in terms of uh, self-discovery, those elements, that's going to create the unique value offer that's specific to you within this subject. So as I said, we embody the theory and we live the frameworks in this subject. All right, so that's the marketing recap. If there are any questions, is there anything else you'd like to know or follow through, you can either uh, raise it at the session. It's a couple of weeks since uh, the slides have gone up. If you're worried about uh, asking a question in class, you're not sure how you think that will go, you can always email me. And if you're on the social medias, you can try me on Twitter if it's a short question, but I can't guarantee it'll be a short answer.